I would say we are at the limit of the house price to income ratios that people can afford at the moment. Um, what we've seen in the last couple of years is that um, interest rates have been really, really low. So the cost of borrowing for your mortgage has been really cheap. Um, and a lot of people fixed on interest rates that were sort of between one and three percent, let's say, the majority of people who had a fix in the last sort of five years. Um, now those interest rates are going up, so the cost of servicing that mortgage is increasing. Um, it also means that when people go to buy a to buy a new home or to switch their homes, the cost of servicing that loan has now gone up. So their purchasing power has fallen. They will no longer be willing to pay as much for the house as they were before because the cost of repayment on that mortgage has changed. That's the market correcting. It's people saying, I can no longer afford that much money for that house. We hear this, this terminology, house price correction, yeah. but is that not a crash? When I think in the last sort of couple of decades, when we've looked at buying a house, the expectation is that house prices will probably continue to increase. So, you know, this is a relatively safe investment um, because I, you know, I know that in general, house prices continue to go up. I'm highly unlikely to experience a massive house price crash. Um, if I did, that interest rates are low, all is well. I think we're now in a situation where that is no longer looking as rosy. And that's really, really difficult. Because we've never had house prices this high in relation to wages and interest rates this high. So what we're looking at is sort of a first. We've had house price crashes, downturns, yeah. corrections before. We've had high inflation before and we've had high interest rates before. But what we've never had is people borrowing this much in relation to what they earn and historically high house prices. Like at the end of 2022, house prices had never been so high. 100%. And I Why think Why is that bad though? Cuz some people think it's great that house prices are so high. Yeah, uh, look, we're all making money. It's fine. We're not. We're all going to lose loads of money until it falls. So yeah, so I think going back to like who is experiencing what in this situation as well. I think you've got your recent first-time buyers who have bought let's say in the last 5 to 10 years that have bought um when house prices are really really high, highly That's likely me. that you don't have a huge amount of equity in the property um because deposits have to be small when house prices are so big because how could you possibly afford you know, more than a 20% deposit on a flat in London. Um, you've got uh, people who have potentially owned their home for a much longer period of time. Perhaps, you know, they own, I don't know, let's say more than half of that outright. It's highly unlikely that they would be falling into negative equity at the moment. Um, it also depends if you um, are going to keep your home. So if you are staying in your home, your so your mortgage repayments may rise, but you're not looking to sell it. So the negative equity point might become a little bit, you know, less important because you're planning on staying it for the next 10 to 20 years. And again, house prices after a correction will probably rise again. You'll probably find that that sort of all balances out. Probably, but not definitely. Definitely. That, Definitely. That is true. Yes, yeah. exactly. And I think this is the tricky thing. We can't just expect that house prices will continue to rise. Because that's something that I'm hearing a lot, which is, oh, but it will be fine because yeah. house prices will go back up because that's what they always do. Mm -hmm. And it's true. If you look at a graph of house prices over the last 200 years, they go like this. But, yeah. but the general trend is, is up. Yeah. But have we stretched that elastic relationship between how high house prices can go and what people earn? To, to its limit. Already, I think what we're seeing is you can't buy your first home without family support. It is near impossible, particularly in expensive cities, because quite frankly, wages just aren't enough, um, particularly if you're already paying rent, which is taking up significant proportion of your income. How do you save for a deposit? I would say we are at the limit of the house price to income ratios that people can't afford. During the pandemic, house prices rose significantly. Um, you know, we saw it sort of double digit house price growth. Faster than they ever had. Exactly. Um, what we're seeing now is probably a correction of the last couple of years coming into play. So house prices, even if... Um, so they've fallen slightly at the moment, even if they fell a bit further, they still probably wouldn't be lower than where we were sort of um, pre-pandemic. However, so that impacts those significantly who bought in the last mm. few years. 
And it will depend where you are in the country, exactly. right? London and the southeast, house prices were particularly high. Yeah. In other areas, that's true too. But it, it, there will be regional differences. Do you think we should be worried about the housing market? I think we should be worried about the housing market, but for a range of reasons that aren't just on what house prices are. Right. How can we make sure that mortgage holders don't lose their homes? Now, that is a really, really important question because if you've come off a fixed rate recently and you've had to refix your mortgage, it's highly likely you are paying hundreds of pounds more per month, if not thousands, on additional costs for your mortgage. Now, I'm going to quote your own figure back at you. 700,000 people already struggling. Yeah, and that's 700,000 households on low incomes. Um, So many more than that. So at the Joseph Roundtree Foundation where I work, we primarily look at those on low incomes. And I think there is a really, really big difference about whether or not someone or a household who has a really, really high income and have savings to fall back on can afford this change in circumstance with their housing costs compared to those who are already struggling um, to meet their mortgage costs. If those go up, you know, by hundreds of pounds a month, there aren't hundreds of pounds available to be repaying that. So that becomes a real question about how do we best support those households to keep their homes? What I would also say is the same conversation hasn't been happening for renters. 